Okay, hi everyone. This is Dr. Anoki from the Apple Tree Pediatrics. Uh, this is the Health Scooter Series live chat. We're going to be discussing asthma with Dr. Richardson from Texas. Anyway, hi, Dr. Richardson. Okay. Um, Hello. How are you? I'm how are good. You? How are you doing? Good. 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 Once I'm again, doing fine. You, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this with us. No, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Okay. Uh, so would you like to uh, introduce yourself so our viewers can get a bit of an introduction? Sure. Okay, I'm Carolyn Richardson, and I'm over here in the United States in the great state of Texas, and I've been a pediatrician for 30 years. Uh, it just so happened to where I trained, we had a, a allergy and asthma fellowship. So we saw a lot of patients with asthma, a lot of patients with uh, allergies. And uh, I have seen asthma go through many changes and we have a lot of good medications now. And we also know what is asthma and what's not asthma. And we will be covering all of that today. Excellent. That's really, really good. And I like the fact that you highlighted that it's gone through a lot of change. Um, yes. It also, it's, it's, it's important that uh, people understand medicine is not a static uh, 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 yeah. occupation yeah. it's yes. constantly yes. changing constantly You're constantly changing. having to go online check your resources constantly check i've had someone one of my friends comment oh i thought this doctor was not very good i was like why they're like oh when i was asking them questions they say one second and they actually researched it mm -hmm. and i was like well yes that's, that's a good actually thing what you want them to do you know right. you want them to right. check to make sure am i following the latest guidelines especially if it's something yes. uh Absolutely. weird and wonderful which it often mm -hmm. is Anyway, before we jump right into the asthma, I thought we'd just um, touch up a little bit on our just our regular viral illnesses, like a regular yes. cough and a cold. Um, yeah. Winter month, winter seasons. Yes. Um, so we're seeing a lot of it. We know the cold, dry environment makes it very conducive for viruses to spread. That's why we're seeing yeah. a lot more coughs and colds in this time mm -hmm. of the year. Yeah. Um, so... How many coughs and colds are normal? I mean, I usually say even if your child comes down who's going to school pretty much every month with mm -hmm. a runny nose and a cough, um, mm -hmm. as long as they're growing, developing, and recovering well, um, is not uncommon in the smaller it's age not. groups. And exactly. Do you agree? Yeah. Yes, so exactly. What about that's, that's what we tell the <laughs> parents. Like, usually seven to nine colds in a season. So mm -hmm. if it looks like, you know, the child just got finished with a cold and now they have another cold, I always tell the parents, you know, they're building their immune system. That's why you don't see school-aged children in the waiting room. You only see small children in the waiting room because they're building their immune system. And as long as they're recovering and they're growing, like you say, growing well, eating well, you just treat their runny nose, give them a little little tea with lemon or something like that, and, you know, they, they get all right. Yes. Yeah, uh, coming, coming to that. So what are the, I mean, um, what is your opinion on cough syrups? Well, the thing is, is that especially under the age of six, we do not recommend cough syrups, number one, because they don't really work. And you don't want to be uh, affecting the child's ability to breathe with cough syrups. So the, what you do is you just treat them to make them comfortable. Uh, honey is very good. Uh, lemon is very good. You can just warm it up with a little water and give it to the child. It's very good. Uh, if their nose is running, you just use like saline nose drops to just keep the airway open and keep them from being congested, give them, make them comfortable and they'll be fine. A lot of times if their throat is a little dry, they may cough from that. And if they drink something, that, then their throat won't be dry and they'll stop their coughing. No, thank you. That's, that's very good information. Um, mm -hmm. And it's important. So we're, we're going to like, um, somebody's come online, Gansham Das. Hello. Hello, Gansham Das. Um, so we're going to dive right into the asthma side of okay. things. Um, mm -hmm. Not every cough is asthma, and yes. not every cough requires. Uh, over asthma here, there's a lot of nebulization with steroids, yes. a combination yes. of steroids and Ventolin. And I'm like, first of all, we don't use that combination. Number one, no. number two, um, there's a lot of patients come in with the routine. Okay, my child's been coughing for three days, so I've given mm -hmm. them the beclomethasone combined with Ventolin, there's mm -hmm. this nebule that is available in Pakistan and like it's not mm -hmm. getting better. So right. um, I think it's important to highlight that every cough is not asthma. That's right. That's very, that's very important. Uh, a lot, especially when they have a cold, they'll, they'll have a cough with a cold. 
And so um, most of the time, if you just give them something to soothe their throat, because it's, it's kind of a nerve, it's kind of irritated. So that's why they keep coughing. So if they drink a little something to soothe that nerve, to, they will stop coughing. Yeah. No. Okay. So um, to start with, what is asthma? Well, asthma like is, yeah, asthma is, is, is a special respiratory uh, reaction, basically, to some kind of trigger. You could have a cold and have, a, like, you could have a viral illness and, and that'll trigger it. But a lot of times it's things like pollen, things that float in the air, pollen, dust, uh, animal dander, like a cat or a dog. Um, uh, dust is, is everywhere. And that can be it. like the little mites that live in the dust that can trigger asthma. Strong fumes, like uh, some people like to do a lot of air fresheners or have those those uh, odor infusers that put different strong odors in the air. And that can actually be an irritant to the airway. So anything that can trigger the airway, and if the airway is a little sensitive and, 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 and then reacts to that, that's what asthma is. So if the, if the tubes in the airway go into spasm, that's when you need medicine. Uh, if you don't have spasm going on in the airway of your lungs, then you don't need asthma medicine, even if yeah. you're coughing. Yes. So what, what is the, the typical or one of the typical histories, what you see? So when a child comes to you, um, what are the typical stories you hear where you start thinking that, you know, this may be this asthma? This could be asthma. Yeah, a lot yeah. of times what they'll be having is like difficulty breathing. They may even be wheezing where you can hear this whistling kind of noise when they're breathing, especially when they breathe out and the child will be having difficulty breathing. You may notice that the child may dec not, not be as active at play. Or, or, or get tired when they're playing more, more quickly than their friends. And, and if it kind of, especially if it's around the time when there's a change in the season or if the if air temperature has gotten cold or something like that, that those would be the things that make you think, hmm, maybe this is asthma. And especially if there's some kind of allergy history also that makes you kind of wonder, is this asthma? I think this might be asthma, yeah. Yeah. And uh, just to um, um, highlight that when we hear wheezing, it's because uh, a lot of parents, like, I don't hear anything. It's mm -hmm. when we actually listen to the lungs. With the stethoscope. So, yes, with yeah, the stethoscope. with the stethoscope. Yes. Because yes. then I would mm -hmm. have parents coming in, I'm not hearing wheezing. <laughs> right, right. So when you're listening true. to the lungs with the stethoscope. Right. Yeah. Exactly, um, exactly. What about the prolonged cough, um, mm -hmm. regular nightly coughs, prolonged coughs that may not have um, the typical symptoms? Because we sometimes see those not so common, but we sometimes see those patients, okay, mm -hmm. they, they may not come in with a typical presentation, but they just have a cough that mm -hmm. is never mm -hmm. ending. Um, yeah, do well, we start you, have, about asthma? you can have, you can have a cough variant asthma, but again, these are children who are like coughing, even in their coughing. So if they have like a bad or things like that, those, those are things that kind of make you think of asthma. If the cough has been hanging around, you know, for more than a week, or and usually if it's just a cold, the cough tends to try, start trying to taper off. But if the cough doesn't taper off and it just continues, and, and especially at night, or say like if after the child runs and plays, they start coughing. Those are things that kind of make you think more of asthma. Yeah. yeah. Like the child and, and, was fine until they were running and playing, and then they started coughing. Then that makes you think of cough varying asthma yeah, or exercise and do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and just to highlight, not every night cough is asthma because sometimes right, your regular exactly. running off can get worse at night. Mm -hmm. Everything gets worse right. at night. Oh, yeah. Emergency rooms or are the, always... Or when they're, when they're draining, when, they're, when they lie down and the mucus is draining, yeah. they will cough. So yeah, oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, what are... So going on from um, definition of asthma, what mm -hmm. are the tests for asthma? Well, there's no actual test for asthma. Asthma is basically, it's kind of like you see a pattern of symptoms and you say, hey, you know, you see this group of symptoms together, especially the difficulty breathing, the wheezing, the shortness of breath, or breathing fast, breathing hard. Those are the things that make you think of asthma. And then you check the chest. You may hear wheezing when you listen with your stethoscope. That, those are the things that make you think of asthma but there's no test there's no like where you draw their blood and get a result and say oh yeah this is asthma there's no test for that you just look at a pattern of symptoms yeah no and um the um spirometry because i've had parents come in oh my child mm -hmm. had a spirometry which is your lung function you do on this machine yes. um mm -hmm. in a lab and they're like it was normal so my child doesn't have asthma but 
when they come to me, they are having the symptoms of asthma. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So uh, maybe we can touch upon that. Why was the lung function normal? The spirometry normal? Well, see, yeah. the thing is, it just depends. Um, the spirometry can be still in normal range because you have to lose more than 80% of the function of the lung before you start saying, oh, this is not normal. So you can have symptoms of asthma. You, you could listen and hear wheezing and yet their, 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 their spirometry would be nor- still in the normal range. But you can still have symptoms, even if the spirometry findings are normal. So they would still no, that- require treatment. They would still require treatment because they have the symptoms. No, that's that's very very um, also for me. That's very very good to know. Uh, very interesting to hear. Sorry, I just need to log back into my computer. Um, it's got my questions up there. Uh, I do apologize. I should have. I'm trying to be green by uh, not printing out. Okay. Oh. Um, let's go on to. Um, treatment and management. So what, mm-hmm. what is, um, what's the first line treatment of asthma? Well, the first line treatment is the albuterol. I think you call it uh, sal, 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 salbutamol. Salbutamol, yeah. In Europe, yeah, butamol, and yes. in fact, some call, call it salbutamol. Yeah. But you want it's to keep, a you, brand name Ventolin, parents yes, understand. Yes, the Ventolin, yeah. yes. And you, all the, I always tell the parents, keep all your medications separate. Don't combine you. It's better not to use, especially for your quick reliever medicines. You want them to be separate. So I know they have a medication that's kind of combined with the steroid. But the problem with that is that the salbutamol is given like every four to six hours. And the recommendation for steroid is either once or twice a day. So if you're giving it more often than once or twice a day, that's too much. That's too much. Yeah. 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 So what, what is the salbutamol or the Ventolin doing when mm-hmm. you give it to your child? And when well, do you the, ven- the, the Ventolin will stop the spasm. The key thing that's going on is you have spasm in the little tubes of the lung, the airways in the lungs. So the Ventolin is calming that spasm down. It's causing the muscles that are around the little tubes and airways to relax and open back up. Because the reason why the child is struggling to breathe is because the airways are squeezing closed. So if the airways are squeezing closed, you, they breathe in the Ventolin and that causes the muscles in these little tubes to relax and open back up. And now the air can flow freely and the child no longer is struggling to breathe. And because there's no mucus leaking and there's no spasm, that also stops the wheezing. So it works, the, it's quickly working on those things that are causing the child to have difficulty breathing. So, um... When do we then um, start with steroids? Or, or would you like to talk about the leukotriene receptor inhibitors like uh, Monte Lucast? Okay. Because I well, have questions is, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the recommendation from, from, we go by the recommendation with NIH and they have a step kind of therapy. And mm-hmm. if you're using those quick, rel- the quick reliever medication, like the Ventolin, and mm-hmm. it's not, uh, or, and the child has, the, it's like the child gets okay, and then, you know, they have to use it again. So we have a kind of like a rule of two. If they need that more than twice a week, then that's an, an, an indication that they need to use inhaled steroids. Inhaled steroids are a lot safer than drinking the steroids by mouth, like in a syrup, because when you drink it in a syrup, it's infe- affecting the whole body, you know, the, all the organs in the body. Whereas if you breathe it into the steroid into the airway, it's targeted right at where it needs to work. And so it, it, the steroids get in, they calm down the inflammation, and they make the airway less sensitive to the triggers that start the spasm in the first place, and they make the airway less reactive to triggers. And so all that helps control the symptoms. So that's why the inhaled steroids fall into the, the, the category of the controllers, because they're actually controlling symptoms and keeping, and keeping you from having to need your quick relief. What yeah. guides needing the steroids is if you're using, if you have frequent use of your quick reliever, the Ventolin, that's an indication that you now need to add an inhaled steroid. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I have a parent asking a question, very valid question. Mm-hmm. What about prednis- prednisone? Mm-hmm. We do, right in the, in the early, the first couple of days of, a, a, of an asthma attack when the child is uh, having a lot of difficulty breathing, we do use the prednisolone, the little syrup, or the, sometimes there's like a little dissolvable tablet. We do use that.
to also help open the airways and calm down the inflammation. But you can, you can only use those medicines that you take by mouth safely for about four or five days. After that time, you need to transition to the inhaled steroids because it's a much, much lower dose and it's not affecting the entire body. It's only working targeted right at the airways. So that's why you want to switch from using the oral steroids was like an emergency medicine just to kind of get everything under control and then you switch over to the inhaled steroids. Yeah. And I, I think it's important to highlight that your steroids take about two, three days to actually kick in. So they're not yeah. an emergency medication. Right. Exactly. Parents, well, you know, they're like, it's not doing anything. Like it is mm -hmm. doing something. It's reducing yeah. the inflammation, right. reducing yeah. the reaction and reducing the exactly. need for ventilation. But Ventolin will always be your first line. The first, the first line. The first line. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wanted to touch. Uh, do, you, do you use Montelukast at all? Yes, uh, is, yeah. yes, yes, Montelukast is important, especially if there's a, a, a strong allergy component. Allergy, yeah. The way one allergist explained it is like the upper airway gets inflamed first, and then that inflammation passes down to the lower airway. So you start off with itchy eyes, runny nose, and, and like that, and then the upper airway is inflamed. That inflammation, if it's not controlled, will then pass on down to the lower airway. So, and I have seen that in patients that have strong allergy component, because a lot of times they have what we call the, the they have allergy and they have asthma. And leukotriene is very effective. It's like an add-on medication, and it's very effective if you, uh, to help control the upper airway so the lower airway doesn't get inflamed. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's really, really good. Okay. Um, so... We've already, so how often should we use, well, we've already touched on that, re mm -hmm. relievers in children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ventilin, because well, I have a lot of parents yeah. who get really frightened. It can be used. Use Ventolin, it makes the heart rate goes up and yes. you know, I'm scared yes. of that. Yes, well, the, 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 the increased heart rate is a, is a brief thing. And as soon as they stop, as, as soon as the breathing treatment is over, their heart rate goes back to normal. Plus, the other thing I always tell parents is that, you know, the child is terrified because they're struggling to breathe. That alone will cause their heart rate to increase also. So if you can get the, the get rid of the, the breathing difficulty, that will also help the heart rate come down. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really good. And I've always seen, I mean, the kids tolerate the increased heart rate very well. Yes. Yes, they, yes. they start breathing and then they start jumping off the walls from being a very sort of irritated, sedate child who can't breathe. And then exactly. suddenly the lungs are open. They're like yes. bouncing off the walls. They're all excited. Yes, yes. Um, because they feel and, better. And they that, feel better. Yeah. And then, then obviously the heart rate goes up very nicely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as a general rule, um, we don't, I mean, I don't recommend nebulizers at home. What is, what is your opinion on that? Because over mm -hmm. here, it's like, um, inhalers are not used that much. Everybody has a nebulizer. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, um, um, in the UK, we've seen, okay, research has shown um, that if you use the inhaler via spacer, I mean, not only is yeah. it more cost-effective, easy to carry around, cleaner, yes. uh, but the side effects are less prominent. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a slight reduced need for admission in hospital if you're in inhalers mm -hmm. rather than nebulizers at home. And then how are you supposed to use a nebulizer when you're outside? Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing is that nebulizers a lot of times are more effective, especially when the child is very young. Mm -hmm. um, but once, once they're at school age, you're right, a spacer mm -hmm. with an a, a, a inhaler mm -hmm. is, very, is effective because the key is you need the spacer so that the medicine gets delivered to the airways. If you're mm -hmm. just kind of squirting the, the inhaler in the child's mouth, they may be swallowing the medicine and then it's not getting yeah. to the lungs. Yeah. So you do need a spacer with a mask so that the medicine actually gets to the airways where it can be affected. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And with, with the nebulizer, um, I just recently had a patient who's like, I took some normal saline and I was told to put one drop of Ventolin, mm -hmm. which is less than 2.5 milligrams. Yeah. So what, what, what can you tell us about that? The importance, the minimum dose that you need of Ventolin in the nebulizer mm -hmm. for it to work. Otherwise, there's no really well, point in doing it. Yeah, yes, you, 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 especially if you have the unit doses that are already prepared, you have to use the entire dose to get the proper effect. Uh, if the child truly is wheezing, to give them saline that just has a drop of the Ventolin in it will not be enough medicine to get rid of the spasm and to get rid of the tightness in the airways. 
So they have to have the effective dose, the correct dose, the right dose, so that it will get rid of the spasm and get rid of and relax the muscles and open up the airways. Yeah. Um, would you like to say something about peak flow meters and asthma action yeah. plan? Yes. Peak flow meters are kind of give you a, an idea of uh, how the child is doing. So like you see the child and they, they might kind of be not playing and not active and really quiet. You might want to check their peak flow meter to see what level they're at. And if the yes. level is indicating that they need to use their reliever medicine, then you wouldn't want to use it. Yes. Yeah. So, so just to explain to my, uh, the, for our followers um, who are on right now or ones who, you know, will look at this afterwards when they wake up. Um, mm -hmm. So your um, a peak flow meter is a small little gadget. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's just a tube that your child blows into. So blows uh, we into, usually yeah. ask to do it three times and then take the highest measurement. It's just mm -hmm. to see. Um, mm -hmm their lung function it's it's a yeah. simple home um uh, gadget yeah. just to see the lung, yeah. lung function yes yeah. we tend to ask um, in order to create your um, asthma action plan um yeah. we usually ask our patients to do it for two weeks in the morning and yeah. evening yeah. after yeah. brushing yeah. their teeth so that we mm -hmm. see where your lung function is and then if you can just describe um like how do we create an asthma action plan using the okay, okay. yeah the asthma action plan uh say for instance for instance, the child has symptoms, they're not that frequent. So that child would not need a controller medicine. So they wouldn't have any medicine that they're taking on a daily basis. But they, if they reach the level where they need to use their rescue medication, then it gives them an, in, this is when you need to start the uh, rescue medication. And then of course, if the child is at a level where they need emergency attention, where they need to actually get in to see the medical provider or the doctor, then you quick you do give them a reliever of medicine at home, but then you then get them to the doctor so that the doctor can then listen to their lungs with the stethoscope. Sometimes you can even assess their oxygen level, you know, kind of see how difficult how how much struggling to breathe they're doing. All of these things would then then guide what treatment they would need to get them back to normal. To yeah. back to normal. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And just to explain to parents, an asthma action plan is actually a printed out sheet that we give yes. that is basically um, tailored to the need of your child. Your so for child, each child specific. Yeah, exactly. individually ta tailored according to the medications they're taking. And it gives you a guide of, yes. as you said, what to do in an emergency. And mm -hmm. it's also very good um, to have a set of the asthma action plan as well as the Ventolin with Spacer uh, set of fit line in the child's school with their school teacher exactly. Um, exactly. for emergencies. Exactly. Um, just an important thing to highlight for parents, um, unless you are living right next to a hospital, if your child is having a severe asthma attack with difficulty in breathing, it is still better to call an ambulance. Ambulance. Um, we have, Absolutely. Yeah, we have. Absolutely. So we do have problems with ambulances here, unfortunately, wow. Dr. Richardson. Mm -hmm. But we do uh -huh. have, um, there are several services. One that I've had personal good experience with is the Amman Foundation. Mm -hmm. They're all charity ambulances. Um, the, mm -hmm. the number is 1021. It's an emergency number. And mm -hmm. the most important thing with an ambulance is that they have oxygen. Yes. And it's yes. important yes. that your child needs oxygen. So yes. in case you yes. get stuck in traffic, in case you yes. are taking the time to get to the hospital, exactly. you may think, oh, I can drive crazy and fast and get there faster. No. But no. That time is not enough. Um, your yep. child will need oxygen. So even if you have to wait at home, Amman Foundation has been in my house like within five minutes when we required oxygen. Mm -hmm. So um, as long as they can get there quick um, and they have oxygen, they actually have it in the um, ambulance itself. The ambulance. They have a machine. Exactly. That. Exactly. Yeah. So, but not all of them. Only Dr. Amman Foundation I know has it. Um, okay. uh, uh, the the machine that actually makes the oxygen. So you don't need yeah. okay. a canister. Oh, okay, the, yeah, a lot yeah. of other ambulances just have, mm -hmm. if you're lucky, they'll just have a canister of oxygen there. I Tanks, see. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're we're um we're not as sophisticated mm -hmm. as um in Europe and the U.S. <laughs> with our ambulance <laughs> services. Okay. But yeah, that's why people are not used to using it. And I'm trying to highlight the importance of it is that it has yeah. oxygen. And just remember, your exactly. child cannot breathe, and they do require that oxygen. Really important. Yes. Yes, um, especially the, the tighter their airs, the airways are closed, the more they need the oxygen. Absolutely. Yeah. Really, really important. Um, just um, another few more questions. Um, 
antihistamines in mm -hmm. asthma, what role mm -hmm. do they play? Well, antihistamines are not used for asthma. Antihistamines are for allergy, so they're not used mm -hmm. for asthma at all. They don't. They don't. Uh, they don't impact the airways in the lungs, so they're not. They don't help with asthma. If you're having an asthma attack, antihistamines will not help you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, because I have a lot of parents coming. Um, they're like, my child has an allergic cough, so I need to give mm -hmm. them antihistamines. Yes. No, no, antihistamines so. are, are for itchy eyes, uh, runny nose, that's, they're for allergy symptoms, but they will not help no. asthma. No. That's your asthma. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, very good. Um, I, I don't know if we want it a bit more uh, in detail. Um, um, if you're happy, we can discuss. But I had a parent message in last night, and she was wondering mm -hmm. if you could um, touch upon the, um, this goes in a little bit more higher level, um, IgE and non-IgE um, linked. Oh, the allergic? Asthma. Yeah. The allergic the asthma? asthma is allergic, yeah. So it's basically mm -hmm. allergic and the non-allergic. So that's IgE. Yeah. They have yeah, the allergic asthma, which is very rare. Yeah. Yeah. Their, the allergic asthma, is, number one, is very rare. And then they have their own specific medications for that, that is specifically for, um, um, to treat allergic asthma, people that have high counts of eosinophils, like there's a specific class of medications for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, kids that we see... And you have to be careful with that because those, those medications also have uh, age, age restrictions. I mean, not restrictions, but they have recommended ages to use them for. Like, they have one that you can't use it under 12 years old, and they have yeah. another one that's only for six. So you have yeah. to be very careful with those medications. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so, but, but basically the run-of-the-mill asthma is is not using a phallic asthma. It's just to highlight no. the parents. No, It's the yeah. regular asthma. Um, yes. Even though a lot of people will say this is the allergic, this is the using a phallic. Mm -hmm. It's not allergic. It's basically you're using a phallic asthma. It's very, very, um, that's rare. Yes. very difficult to treat. Um, yes. And just to highlight also... Mm -hmm. Um, so I just read a study, uh, it was done two, three years ago in mm -hmm. um, Wales, I think, where they basically okay. were checking who are the, um, unfortunately, who are the um, patients who mm -hmm. are actually dying from asthma. And right. um, surprisingly, because basically they have the NHS, so it's every, the entire system is centralized, so they actually could, um, you know, check which are, who the patients, how their asthma That's was classified, what were the medications. Yeah. and. Mm -hmm. The thing what they saw was um, they checked whether the prescriptions were being filled or not, whether the patients were actually uh -huh. going and taking the prescriptions or not. Yeah. And yeah. one of the most interesting things is we would assume it's one of those, you know, the people dying from asthma would be the ones with really horrible, hard to treat asthma, no. which was not the case. It was no. the moderate cases of asthma because yes. they, and it usually happened in the late teens, because mm -hmm, yeah. they, you know, you got, you got the, the ones who are entering early adulthood because mm -hmm. they couldn't understand that my steroid, my preventer, which I'm using as an inhaler, um, right. is actually making a difference because you mm -hmm. don't feel any difference. Unlike when you're taking your Ventolin, I'm asthmatic myself. So when I take my Ventolin, I'll like, oh, I can breathe, you know? Right. But when yeah. you take a steroid, you don't really, you think, oh, it's not doing anything. It's not making a difference. I don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also important, I think, to highlight okay, um, with Ventolin, the more you use it, that's why yes. you need to come with steroids, your lungs get mm -hmm. desensitized. Yes. Well, not so, only that, not only that, when you're having to constantly use the reliever medications, that's also causing damage to the lungs. That's the other thing. You want to use the inhaled steroids to keep the inflammation at bay to make the, uh, the, the airway less sensitive, not so easy to be triggered and to go in into these reactions. So the steroids are actually helpful in that regard. That's, that's what guides when you need to know to use steroids. Is the person having to constantly use their reliever medication? Using, you're supposed to use one inhaler should last you an entire year. People look shocked when I tell them that. If you're needing more than one inhaler for the entire year, you don't have good control. So the yeah. medication has to be adjusted to give you good control. And see, you're right. Even though you take the steroid and you don't feel some big sense, of, but if you're the, the, the test that the steroid is working and that is that you're not constantly reaching for your Ventolin. 
If ventilin, you're constantly yeah. reaching for your ventilin, then your asthma is not under control. Oh, I know. That's, that's really good. Um, I got uh, Renara Huya brought, writing in, allergic cough is self-diagnosed. Yes, that's true. A lot of mm -hmm. parents come in, I think my child has allergies. I mm -hmm. think my child has allergic cough. Mm -hmm. um, with allergies, every runny nose. Um, it's, uh, a lot of my patients have been shocked to find out that their little ones are not allergic mm -hmm. and that they simply have a regular cough and cold that basically, yeah. and then they they'll start noticing it's during the school year that they're constantly yeah. having it. And on vacation time, there's nothing there. Right, um, right. So majority of the patients who've come in do not have allergies. It's just your yeah. regular cough and cold. Cool. Yes. Um, so we've um, we've done the asthma action plan. We've done our um, relievers. We've done our mm -hmm. preventers. Um, mm -hmm. God, there was another question. Um, we've we've finished, gone through all the list. Is there anything else you'd like to say about asthma? Well, just to just to follow up, just to point out about children having frequent colds during the uh, cold and flu season, a healthy child can have anywhere from seven to nine colds in a cold season. And if the cold takes about seven days to get over, that's why it looks like every time you turn around, the child has another cold. But you yeah. have to understand that the child is building their immune system. And when they're older, they won't get as many colds. So it's fine. And a, a, a good thing I always tell my parents is, you know, if the child has a cold, especially if they have a little low-grade fever, change their toothbrush because their toothbrush can be a source of where the virus, they can reinfect themselves with the virus so change your toothbrush. That helps a lot. Oh, very, very, yeah, very, very good advice. Very good advice. No, no. Um, flu vaccine. That was the question I couldn't remember. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. The flu, the flu vaccine is recommended for any child, well, for all children six months and older. And if the child has any kind of respiratory issues, they definitely should get a flu vaccine. It, that's just required. Of course, the first time they get it and if they're under uh, nine years of age if they're from uh, six months to eight years old if the very first time they get it you have to get a booster in a month but then after that you just every fall season and it's good to get it early in the season because it takes about two weeks for the protection to get on board so you want to take it early in the season like you know this is the time you want to get it because once the winter hits you're, you're into late october early november that's when you really want to already have your flu immunization protection on board yes yeah. Um, and just to um, highlight, uh, the flu mm -hmm. is not that common runny nose and a cough you have. No, no, flu no, no, is, no, no. Flu is, is, is high fever, uh, achy joints. Uh, just you, you, when you, flu, you can tell flu is different from a cold. A cold, cold, your nose is running, you're coughing, you're still running around, and everything like that. But when you have influenza, we're talking high fever. Uh, just throat may be uh, really uh, burning and, and sore. You have achy joints. I mean, you're like really sick. So flu is different from that. And, and you can do a test for the, for the flu and you can take flu medication for that to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. And again, if and you have the flu, change your toothbrush. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, just to highlight, in Pakistan, we do not have the rapid influenza, rapid flu kit. Okay. We don't have okay. it here. Okay. Okay. Um, but, I did look into look, it. A lot of it's times like, you look at the child, you can tell they have the flu. You yeah, just look at them. Yeah, yeah. You can say, yes, and the ones you send to the lab, by the time you get the results, there's no problem. Oh, yeah. You need They're to better. Treat the right. within 20 hours. So yeah. um, to put it with the antivirals um, and just yeah. to highlight, okay, what, does, what role does, do antibiotics play in the flu? Well, antibiotics, well, you see, the flu is a viral illness. So yeah. you don't use antibiotics for bacteria. So you don't use antibiotics for the flu. You don't. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. somebody has a viral illness, then they need an antiviral, which is what the flu, the flu medicine is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you have to give it within a certain period of time. Otherwise... Yeah, you try, um, you try to catch it within the first 48 hours of the symptoms. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's un unless it's something severe, there's a big question about whether it makes a difference to treat it beyond mm -hmm. that because it's not mm -hmm. going to make much of a difference. But yeah, unfortunately, right. we do not have the rapid flu test here. Uh, okay. We do carry the rapid strep test in my clinic for the streptococcal oh. throat so that we can differentiate yes. between viral and uh, bacterial yes. throat infections. Yes. Uh, but obviously not the rapid flu. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, So, oh yeah, follow-ups. 
Mm -hmm. Sorry. Now it's good. Wait. It's good to follow up. It's good to follow up. Uh, most of the time, uh, it's good that they usually see them like every three months or so. To, depending on how severe their asthma is, will kind of mm -hmm. guide the follow up. So if the child is, you know, not having, not having too much, it can be seen like every three to four months. But if the child is needing to have their medication kind of adjusted, you're trying to get them under control. They might have to initially be seen like every two or three weeks until you can get them on a regimen that keeps their symptoms under control. So it just, yeah. how severe their asthma is kind of guides how often they need to follow up. So the more frequently they're using their Ventolin, the more often they need rescue treatment, then we need to tailor their treatment and their controller medicine. So that would require more frequent follow-up. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I also explained to parents, it's also a good way to, um, always reevaluate, does my child still need the steroid? Does my child mm -hmm. still need the steroid? Can I yes. go down on the dose? When can I come off mm -hmm. the steroid? Mm -hmm. um, would yes. you like to just highlight a bit about that, you know, coming off medication as a child yes, grows? That's, what them do yes. sometimes grow up with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the thing is, as a child grows, they may be less sensitive to the things that trigger their asthma in the first place. So they may have less problems, and and so that's. But you never kind of outgrow it. You may yeah, it's always less sensitive something. to things that trigger. But you always have to keep it in the back of your mind. Yeah. I remember clearly this little girl, uh, hadn't had an, an asthma attack in about two years, but she went on a hay ride with her school trip, and the hay was a trigger that sent her into an asthma attack. And the mom initially didn't realize what was going on because the child had been fine for about two years. And then, but knowing that she had that history was what guided the treatment of, hey, you know, so I, and then of course, when you check her, she's wheezing. And I explained yeah. to mom, I said, you know, it was that hay ride that did it. Another thing, teenagers, they've been doing fine. They go on a camping trip. And next thing you know, they're having chest tightness. They don't know what's going on. It's your asthma. So it, you have to always keep that in the back of your mind. If they yeah. had asthma and if they've been fine for a while, but they start having the symptoms, always keep that in the back of your mind. You know, something I think this is another flare up, you know. Yeah. Um, so um, before we finish, I just wanted to um, highlight um, the difference between a viral induced wheeze to so the wheezing episode in the younger kids mm -hmm. and asthma in the older kids. Okay. Because you yes, have so a large percentage of small kids who can become wheezers, but it's based yes. on their anatomy more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So would you right. like to... Yeah, some some children, some infants, you do see wheezing in infants sometimes if they have a viral illness, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that in the future they will be, they'll develop asthma or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So you can, there are other things that can cause you to wheeze, and it doesn't always it doesn't always uh, indicate that they have asthma. So okay. yes, viral illness can cause wheezing. Yes. Yeah. yeah, in small children, and we usually say yeah, in infants, uh, you usually see that yeah, in, yeah. usually under like two or three years old, you see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but then there's um, actually, there's a cell line that kind of switches over. And then once okay. that gets turned on, they don't do that anymore. Yeah. Okay. So we have a question come in. My son also never had asthma. He's two years old, but this is, oh, sorry. The weather changed? It, and she goes, uh, it's, um, one second. I got to open it up on my face. Yeah. Where's I can't it? see the rest of the question. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm sorry, Asma. I can't see the rest of the question. I noticed his breathing. What with the weather the change? Could you write that again? The second bit. Can you can you tap see more to see if that opens? It? It's it's not. Can see you tap see more? Because with me, it's not opening. Oh oh, I don't know. Want me to try? Yeah, just oh. try and see. If... Are you seeing the whole question? Well, well, it went up now. It's not there anymore. <laughs> But I saw I saw C more was in blue letters, so I was I wonder if I tapped that. Yeah, that. I know. With me, it just keeps coming up to what you call adamant oh, something. His, his, she said his oh, breathing oh, pattern his changed. Breathing his breathing changes. pattern changed. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, it it was you would that's when you would want to bring him in because it would take the doctor listening to his lungs to see if wheezing is there. If he's yeah. wheezing and retracting or something like that, then that might be a sign that he would need treatment. Yeah. So he would have to okay. be seen. Yeah. yeah. So the mother's saying it was viral. Um, well, as Dr. Richardson has highlighted, viruses can trigger um, wheezing episodes. In the yes. very small kids, it, it's just because of their anatomy. In the older kids, it can be very likely due to asthma. So mm -hmm. viruses, infections are a trigger for asthma. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
yes, for having yes. an asthma reaction. They don't yes. give you asthma, but they can trigger your the weight, the, They can trigger the spasm in the lungs. The spasm, the spasm. yeah. 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 Um, does he need follow-ups? So, um... I would say yes. yes. I would say yes. I would say yes yeah. because you have to see what pattern is he if he develops a pattern where he has recurrent episodes of wheezing, then that would be something that would need to be addressed. But if it's just kind of one time thing, then that would be fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um steroid nose spray mm -hmm. in asthma. <laughs> No, steroid nose spray is not for asthma. Steroid nose spray is for allergy. It's for, for people that have bad allergies, a lot of sneezing, itchy, watery eyes, itchy ears, itchy throat. That's when, that, and, and see, a lot of times you can use the nasal uh, spray. Uh, now, that's when you would want to use like nasal spray along with something like either the Zyrtec or the Claritin or the Cetirizine. And sometimes you need all three, depending on how severe the allergy symptoms are, mm -hmm. you may even need to use Montelukast and nasal steroid. And but this is all for upper airway. Up, airway. It's, it's treating upper airway, yeah. not lower airway. Yeah. yeah. Nasal um, steroids what, don't what, do anything for asthma. Yeah. 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 No. Very good. Um, and um, decongestant, nasal decongestant sprays. Mm -hmm. Now you have to be very careful with nasal decongestant sprays because what happens is the body gets used to it. And then you have to use higher and higher and higher doses trying to get relief. It's better to use the nasal steroid for the swelling because when you use the, uh, the decongestant sprays, that, that's, a very, that's very dangerous and it's, it's not recommended to do that, especially in, yeah. especially in children, especially in children. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I've just had, a, um, I've had several cases where the kids come in with like really bad decongestant. Um, it's merely because, and, and the parents like, no, but we use it and then we take a break and then we use it and then we take a break. I was like, no. you just don't use it. Because they basically have the experience that when they use it the first time, they're like, oh, the mm. nose clears up, my child can breathe. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, mm. it works, but it is, has risk factors that are just not worth Absolutely. the yeah. benefit and you have seeing. to use, you know, it you just makes it worse. Higher and higher dose. Yes. Yeah. It's better yeah. to use the nasal steroids for the nasal congestion. Nasal spray. We and have they're a very, very about. Yeah. Um, how, okay. So, yeah. So, um, the mom was asking about um, nebulizing with normal saline and Vendolin drops. So, I personally don't use it. I use inhalers, no. asthma. I use yeah. inhalers yeah. with a spacer because you can spacer. dose them yeah. nicely. Yeah. yeah. Always use your inhaler with your spacer. Again, yeah. with the drops. How is your accurate is your dose? I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Nebulizing with Ventolin, you have to have a minimum dose of 2.5 milligrams in yes. your nebule in order to be right. effective. If you go yes. lower than that, it, you're, just, you're just doing water. So, and yeah. just a simple saline, normal saline nebulizer with nothing in it is just nebulizing your child with water. It's not going to do anything. Um, Especially if they're wheezing we or in spasm, it will not help them. Oh, no, no. Again, I've had parents coming in who like, don't want to do anything and they just want to do um, saline nebulization for a child yeah. with asthma. And I've tried to explain yeah. it to them that it's just not going to do anything. Yeah, no. Your Clenel, um, I do understand um, that. Um, so as Dr. Richardson had explained earlier, your steroid, the Clenel is a steroid, not the Clenel compositum. Clenel compositum is your steroid combined with Ventolin. Um, mm -hmm. That is not recommended. Uh, no. Because your Ventolin, as Dr. Richardson explained, you may, you may need it every four to six hours. But the Clena, which is a steroid, uh, if needed, is only required once or maybe twice a day. Okay. Um, right. Flixotide, Evohiller, is that your inhaler? Um, that sometimes we do. That's um, That I think is the Fruticazone inhaler. That again is your okay. steroid inhaler. Yeah. And yes. But again, that's only twice a day. That's twice a day. That's a, that's a control. Yeah, that's twice a, right, that's twice a day, morning and night. Yeah, that's, that's control. It. Yeah. She's like, it's been, she's been told by her physician to give it if she, she's concerned that he's catching a cold. Um, mm. We do, yes, uh, in, in London. I don't know how you do that in the U.S. In the U.K., mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. who sometimes if they have what we call is the viral induced, um, uh, the virus is the trigger. Um, yes. We have sometimes, as soon as a child starts with a cold, we ask them to go on the steroid in order uh -huh. to hope that we don't require the Ventolin because then throughout okay. the rest of the time, they don't 
need anything because if they don't have a cold, they mm -hmm. are fine. They don't need the Ventolin. But right. in the winter months when we're having more frequent coughs and colds, and if we're seeing mm -hmm. that we're having more frequent coughs and colds, then mm -hmm. the next step is to go through the entire season if, if the virus mm -hmm. is the reason that is triggering your... Uh, the uh, cough is... Asthma. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but obviously yeah. the cough needs to be diagnosed as asthma. Mm -hmm. um, this needs to be a wheeze. This needs to be a, a reversible airway obstruction before we yes, use I'm... any of this. Yeah, because I've had yeah. lots of kids come in who um, have uh, the parents thought my child was asthmatic, has been mm -hmm. nebulized with this combination. It's called Clement Compositive nebulization with the combination mm -hmm. of beclomethasone and uh, albuterol, which is a steroid yes. and ventolin right. and right. beta -mimetic. And they've literally done it every month and I've stopped it all. And I'm just like, and they're like shocked that their child has nothing, not even allergies. Um, right. They're like antihistamine. And I was like, no, your child has a viral runny nose. Yes. So it's just um, important for parents to you educate yourself, understand yeah. the medications, understand what you're giving your child. Um, yes. Understand that if your child does have asthma, does have reversible airway disease, you do need regular follow-ups and checkups, especially if yes. they are requiring the Ventolin or your blue inhaler. A lot. Okay. Yes. yes, yes. Yeah. And and uh, really important is your flu vaccine. Um, yes. One of the um, uh, questions that I get are, oh, I took the flu vaccine and then I got sick straight after that. Mm -hmm. so well, I, should... my question. My response to parents is that it doesn't work that fast. It takes two weeks to get on board. So if you got the flu immunization and the next morning you got sick, you were going to get sick anyway. And yeah. I've also had parents who have turned down the flu immunization and their children get very ill and they come back and, oh, I should have gotten the flu immunization. So it's not the immunization that made them sick. It's just that two things happened. One thing followed the yeah. other, but it, it, one didn't cause the other. Exactly. Yeah, we, we, we call it apples and pears, apples and pears. So yes, basically, it's not exactly. the same thing. You were about to come down with the cold, and right. it's just you got vaccinated at the same time, and then your symptoms appeared. Right. And symptoms can right. appear suddenly. Your runny nose right. and your cough suddenly appear suddenly. A lot of parents exactly. are very surprised by that. And they come running, and my child mm -hmm. suddenly started coughing. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's how your coughs and colds go about it. Hydration yeah. and rest is really important. Avoidance yeah. of your allergies and your triggers is really important. Yes. Um, yes. identifying them is really important. Yeah. Um, is there anything? So I, I, I think we've taken up enough of your time, Dr. Richard. Oh, no, it's, is there anything it's fine. that was really, really nice? Is there anything you'd like yeah. to um, say while we wrap up? Well, yeah, I, that's the thing I would really like to stress is to make sure that if people are aware of their child's triggers, that they know if their child has been exposed to that and then they start having symptoms to put the two together and say, you know something, I think there's a flare up here. I think this could be an asthma attack coming on. And that's when they really need their medication. So if you know their triggers, then you know what to avoid. Like, you know, you don't, if the child is, gets triggered by cats, then you don't want to go over somebody's house that has three cats because then you know the child will end up, end up having problems, breathing problems. So, you know, knowing the triggers is very helpful in terms of keeping the child healthy, yes. And just before we finish, I completely forgot. I was going to, what's the next step? Because over here, another thing I've seen um, is that instead of steroids, um, uh, a lot of children are coming in with uh, the serotide inhaler. And that's what one of the parents asked me yesterday um, mm -hmm. as the next step. They're, they're having a wheezing episode and they put directly serotide is your oh, steroid. No, that's a long, I like a, is that a long, long acting? Yes. Yeah, yes. No, that, the recommendation is that if they need, uh, a control of medicine, inhaled corticosteroids is the first one. You, right, sometimes yeah. they have steroids that are combined with the long-acting beta agonists, but you don't that's use the that next the step. next step. That's not the next yeah, step. Yeah, but that's not that. That's that's yeah. But that's like after the steroids and you know things are just right. not improved, etc. Right. Um, but it's not your first step. It doesn't matter how severe your attack is. It's not your first step. No. Your first step is always an inhaled steroid. Steroid. Yeah. We have a question from somebody said 30 month old but, child. Yeah, who's two and a half year old. He's been coughing for a week now. Do not give him any cough syrups. We've discussed cough, this no. in the beginning. Yes, no under, six cough years old, under six years old, no cough syrup. You can use uh, warm water with lemon. And uh, since he's over a, a year old, you can put honey in it. That really soothes their cough. 
They also have homeopathic cough medicines. I don't know if you have that over there. There's a homeopathic cough medicine. We don't. I don't cough. usually recommend. Yeah. No, don't, I just don't yeah. usually recommend But that is them. honey. It's honey based. It's honey based. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. So over here we have our local homeopathic medications um, okay. and some of them have been tested and they've had high dose steroids in it. So, oh, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's it, no, it, these, these are not the same that you'd get over there. No. So I oh, usually okay. just re recommend. Yeah, yeah. So it's not the same. So I, lemon, I, I lemon like, and honey with water. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was like, you don't even need to buy these things. You can do it at home. Again, it's something that shocks mm -hmm. a lot of parents. That I was like, you mm -hmm. need to let. If it's not a, a wheeze, if it's not an asthma, you need to re let it run its course. Most cases, it's yes. viral. It can give fever. It can give high fever sometimes, and um, it um, basically, um, you just need to let it run its course. Mm -hmm. So no, don't she's do the asking homeopathic about... medication. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't no, think because if they have, They're not the same. They're not the same as the ones yeah. we have in the United States. It's not the same. Yeah, no. So just take take honey. That is the raw honey will be better and you'll be safer with mm -hmm. that rather than these mm -hmm. medications. And be careful of all the locally uh, mixed up medications because um, yeah. there's, no there's no regulation. No standard. There's, no. Right, there's no standard. At all. Yes. So we've got like yeah. uh, nearly 800 different pharmaceutical companies, of which 700, wow. that's what has been explained to me, um, mm. have a big question mark on them. So wow. um, got to be very careful with the medications if they're not your regular school medications. And even between oh. the brands, the massive quality difference. So I don't oh. support brands. I just write generics. Um, that's mm -hmm. also a very UK thing, European thing. That we work with generics. We don't work with um, what you call. Okay, this uh, this lady yes. is saying she visits the US frequently, so she can get it. It's called Chestol, yeah. C H E S T A L, and there's no steroid or anything in it. It's just a honey yeah. base. Yeah, it's called Chestol, C H E S T A L. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Anyway, Dr. Richardson, it was really okay. nice. Have yes, you thank on. you. Thank this you really good. so much. You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. I will, yeah, this will be shared again. Um, and uh, we will, that's what she's at. Yeah, yes, Chestol, that's right. C H E. Yes. Yes, yes that's the correct spelling. That's the correct spelling. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I, I hope that the parents, when they wake up and they watch this, um, they'll find it very, very informative. Um, I think they will. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank we're you. trying to, uh, at the Apple Tree, we're trying to, you know, educate parents. For us, education is extremely important to show it is. It, it's it is. the child's best interest and heart. And we want to make sure yes. we're using the latest research and the latest evidence to treat your child. And exactly. modern medicine is all about limiting the medications and not using medications that don't work. Okay. Right. Um, right. Yes, honey and water. That's fine. Raw honey is your organic honey, Madiha. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's fine. It's you want it better than the factory honey because the factory honey is got just full of syrup. Um, oh. Okay. Uh, so okay. I will say thank you. Good night because it's uh, thank you. late night there right now. Yes. Okay. It's okay. Uh, I'll let my sister give you some nice cup of tea or something. Okay. All right. Thank All right. You. Okay. Thank All you right. so much.